Hi, I'm Nikki, the obsessive bookseller. Welcome to my channel. And welcome to the first actual Project Urban Fantasy video since I did my introduction several months ago. This one's been a long time coming. And I'm really excited for it because I've been craving to read Urban Fantasy lately. And I've got a pretty good list, lineup of things, potential candidates, if you will. In preparation for this video series, I went through and picked out all the urban fantasy books that I was interested in reading, ones that I was currently in the middle of, and compiled all the next books on a list on Goodreads. And from that is where I'm going to pick my books that I'm going to be focusing on for this vlog. My initial plan was to just pick one book from the lineup and read it and then come back and pick another book, but I realized my attentions are drawn in so many different places. There are so many books that I'd like to pick up next that I was having a hard time deciding or committing. So I went through and picked out the top five books that I'm most excited to read next. I want to pick up the fourth book in the Sookie Stackhouse series, Dead to the World. I've been enjoying it a lot so far. Um, unconventional, very different than what I was expecting it to be. And even though I find the character so frustrating on occasion, I have to admit that she is written brilliantly because she's able to evoke that kind of reaction for me. I care. And that's a cool thing. So yeah, I want to continue that one. I want to reread Blood Rites by Kristen Painter, first book in the House of Khmer series, to continue the series. I believe it's a five book series. I had only read the first one and then just got busy and never continued on. Very much looking forward to a reread. I remember liking it quite a bit. It's vampire focused and they've got these intricate golden tattoos all over their bodies. At least some people do. Maybe the Khmer house, not... These might be the vampire food people who are tattooed, not the vampires themselves. I can't remember. But anyway, I thought it was cool. So I want to reread that one. In the interest of keeping up to date with Dresden, I'd like to read The Law. The only thing holding me up is the price. I generally prefer to listen to this one on audio because I think James Marsder's is perfection for the character, but I'm not paying a whole credit for like two hours worth of content, so I've got to wait until I free up time in my physical reading schedule to pick up the ebook. And if I draw it, then I'm just going to set down House of Chains by Steven Erickson and pick that up and read it real quick. But yeah, so that one's on the list. I want to restart the Ali Beckstrom series by Devin Monk, starting with Magic to the Bone. I read it over 10 years ago, really liked it, but had so many other series going that I never went back to it. It was one of those, I liked it enough that I'm like, ooh, I'm going to save that for a rainy day. Yeah, don't do that. Just read the rainy day books now. So I'm going to pick that one up to see if I like it as much as I remember liking it to continue. And finally, due to the urgings of a lot of people after my huge rant of book two, I'd like to continue the October Day series by Shenan McGuire. Start Artificial Night is the title. It's a series that I think I'm going to love once it gets going, and I am willing to give it the benefit of the doubt because my all-time favorite series is Alona Andrews, and that one really took off at about book three. But had I based my impressions of the whole series on the first book, I almost DNF'd it. I'm willing to give it the benefit of the doubt. So that's the lineup. At some point today, I'm going to throw all of those titles in a hat and pick one and go from there. I have all the titles here, so let's see which one I'll be reading for the project. Artificial Night. Of all the books I could have picked, this was the one I was least excited to get. And of course, like Murphy's Law, that's the one that shows up. But I guess I guess we're doing the thing. It occurred to me when I sat down to film this update that I forgot to mention one of the books that I included in the pool. Uh, it's the next book in the Ordinary Magic series, also by Devin Monk. I also realized that I have two books in there by her. I guess I'm really in the mood for her stuff. But yeah, that's a series that... Some of them have been absolutely brilliant, and some of them have been total misses, so curious to see how things go with that. But anyway, since it didn't get picked, it doesn't matter much, but it might come up later in the video when I pick again. It has been a couple days, and I am about 30% into Artificial Night. Liking it a lot better than the first, or second book, rather, so far. The problem is, is it's been so long since I read the second book, and I was not particularly invested in the second book. And there are a lot of characters showing up in this one that, that I'm supposed to already have feelings about because of they were in the last book, but I don't remember them. 
And same thing with the uh, love interest, if you will, which I, I can't, I hesitate to even call it a love interest just because I don't see the connection. The author is not putting into the text those slow moments where you can see the fire of the connection start to burn. I'm missing that. So basically, it's kind of like a, well, he's hot. And that's why I like him kind of thing. So while I'm enjoying the story on this one so far, I am missing that very important character connection and depth. And part of that is my fault because I took so long to get back to it and I don't remember a lot of things or people. But the other part is I, I just don't think the character connection writing is there this far in the series. People love it for a reason. I'm sure it goes somewhere amazing. But yeah, just waiting for it to... Uh, like spark something in me. But the plot is fun. It's kind of a good mystery. And actually, this it's close to Halloween when I'm filming, filming this, so, you know, I, I don't read horror books, but this is kind of my equivalent of sp spooky season reads, like paranormal stuff. I don't go out of my way to schedule in thematic, like, reading for holidays. It's a happy coincidence that I'm in an urban fantasy mood right now. So anyway, I'll update you in a couple when I get a little bit further in the book. I'm a little more than halfway through Artificial Night, and I still don't have a connection to the character. And I've been trying to figure out why, as I've been listening, the character is not showing a lot of depth of emotion. To me, she does not feel like a real person. She is not reacting the way a real person would. There's no highs and lows. She kind of just maintains status quo and accepts all of the things as they come to her. Nothing really rattles her. And it's not because she's, like, super good at, like, dealing with things. It's just because the author is not really choosing to focus on that, but just tells, like, what's happening to her. And then, okay, we're moving on. It's more about the plot and the world building. So I'm missing that deep connection. And the plot has been fun so far, but it's also been super, in my opinion, convenient. And, okay, well, you know, things are working out the way they're supposed to, I guess. But I don't, again, because of the lack of emotional investment, and maybe even from the character, I don't feel the tension of the serious moments. I don't feel like we're in any real danger because the character is so, like, whatever happens, happens kind of attitude. So we're going to keep reading. I have so many other urban fantasies that have kind of triggered my interest a little bit more. I have tried this one so many times. The shame of it is, is I was so convinced that if I just kept reading, I was going to like it. So during one of the Audible sales, I spent like 50 bucks and bought the entire series. So I have all of the audiobooks. And so ergo, I'm probably going to continue working my way through them slowly because I do appreciate the story components. And I'm hoping that eventually I will become a believer. It did take me until about book five of Dresden before I was really on board. But I don't think it's one that I'm going to prioritize. It might just be I have to draw it out of a hat and then like, all right, fine, I'll continue it kind of a thing. I have been reading the author's Wayward Children series and much more immersive, deep character connection. And I know those were written much later than this series. So maybe as it goes along, it gets much more emotionally invested, has a lot better qualities in that regard. So I'm willing to give it the benefit of the doubt for now. But yeah, at the moment, it's enjoyable. It's a fun break between other things that I was reading, but I'm not like all fired up about it. Okay, for Project Urban Fantasy, I'm ready to pick a new title. I have, I, honestly, it's been so long since I made these that I don't even remember what titles I chose, but I'm assuming I still want to read them. This is the problem of having too many projects going at once. Like, it's it's been at least a month since I've read the last one, but I'm ready to continue. I have added one new one called Some Girls Bite by Chloe O'Neill, or just Chloe Neal, I think. I have a couple of her books, and it's been one that I've been wanting to kind of start for a long time, but yeah, I've never made time to do it. So yeah, I'm adding that one. It's like two in the morning. It's a long story. But I'm like, I'm wandering around my house. I'm like, I need something to like put these in so that I can draw draw from. And uh, I went into the kitchen and I'm like, oh, I could grab a Tupperware or a bowl. I'm like, no, because then I'm going to have to wash a bowl. So one thing led to another and we're going to use a shopping cart. <laughs> okay. So I need a new title because I am reading some really dense fantasy right now. And I need something that I can 
kind of easier lit so I can listen to it before bed because I've discovered that if I don't have an audiobook on before I go to sleep, then my brain will keep me up all night long. Put in an audiobook with a 10 minute timer and I'm out with it in two minutes. So next I am reading Magic to the Bone by Devin Monk. Sweet. I quite like this author. I've read a couple things from her. Read a steampunk series. I've recently read her Ordinary Magic series and really like that. And I have actually read Magic to the Bone. I may have mentioned that in the intro, but like I said, it was like a month ago, so I don't remember. I read it and I liked it. And it was one of those things where I read it among a whole bunch of other urban fantasy series that I was starting and for whatever reason, just kind of saved it for a rainy day and never got back to it. I remember absolutely nothing about it. So I'm looking forward to diving back into this one. As it happens, I recently picked up almost the entire series on audio on one of those like random really cool audible sales. So got the whole thing for probably like 40 bucks. And wouldn't you know it, about two weeks after I did that, my library suddenly acquired everything. That figures. Anyway, really looking forward to it. I am about 50% through this book and it, it's not going particularly well. Had I not already read it and liked it back in the day, I probably would have put it down already. Well, I don't know if that's true. I tend to give urban fantasies the benefit of the doubt because a few of my all-time favorites did not start out the strongest, but they kind of grew into something great. And I know I really like this author, but okay, so here's a couple of specific gripes. The author is trying to make the character likable, interesting, so she has the character profile as someone who graduated from Harvard. Harvard? Really? And here's the thing about Harvard grads. They're like writing books. They're involved in extensive researching projects. Like they've, they've got so much going on. There is a certain way that Harvard grads carry themselves. And this is a generalization for sure. But nothing about this woman screams anything other than just like basic high school grad. Like she's not particularly intelligent in her actions. So we're supposed to believe that she's this like super smart, super accomplished person. And I mean, she comes from a wealthy family. So even someone who went, got into Harvard on merit of family and not like school smarts or whatever, they still come out of it changed. You have to, the only way to make it through is to become adept at a lot of the things they require. So I don't know, right there you have someone who's trying a little bit too hard. Also, everything about this book so far has been 100% stereotypical urban fantasy. The types of tropes and things that, the reason why people don't like urban fantasy books. Like, for example, Insta Love. The only male character introduced so far is someone of, like, questionable motive. And there's no evidence in the text why she should be drawn to this person. And yet he has become the love interest. It just doesn't make any sense to me. The only appeal that I can see is that she finds him attractive, which is enough in the real world to work, but not in a book. You, you want to see the development there. And I saw absolutely no reason why she should be drawn to this person. In fact, she should be nothing but suspicious of him, which speaks of a lack of intelligence, which contradicts with the whole Harvard grad thing. Although common sense and book smarts are two separate things. But yeah, I don't know. But see, I'm analyzing this way too much, and that's a sign that I'm not interested in what I'm reading, so I have a lot of spare time in my brain to think about stuff like this. Also, there's a magic element that I'm not finding particularly compelling at all. It's not being explored very well. The plot's kind of thin. The dialogue is weak. So overall, things could be going better, is all I'm saying. Random update. Merry Christmas, everyone. So, I was mistaken. Uh, like five minutes after I finished recording my last bit about the whole Harvard thing, the text clarified, like she did not graduate from Harvard. She went to Harvard and then was a dropout after she got into some drugs and stuff. <laughs> so that follows a pattern a lot more consistent with her behavior at the rest of the book. So I thought I would just clarify that. I misunderstood. Y'all, this book though, this has to be one of the worst urban fantasy books I've ever read. 
and I had read it before. That's the thing that kind of blows my mind, but I picked it up back. It was one of the very first urban fantasies I'd picked up. I didn't have any frame of reference on anything to compare it to. I just remember really liking the cover, finding it a little bit fun, and I was kind of saving them for a rainy day. But I also picked up books like Kim Harrison, Patricia Briggs, Jim Butcher, all of those around the same time, and am up to date in all of those series. So there's got to be a reason why I gravitated towards those and kind of left this one behind. Okay, so every single tropey thing, stereotypical urban fantasy is in here. And some of it, some of it, some of the worst I've read, for example, the relationship, or I'm going to use quotes on it, the relationship, because it is one of the most unhealthy, weird, impulsively engaged in relationship I've read in an urban fantasy. Like this woman is not thinking things through. I don't understand what she sees in this guy other than just a physical attraction, but there are so many red flags there. But of course, my prediction is he's going to be like a sustainable love interest through the whole thing. I don't believe he's a villain in any way, but she doesn't know that. And she doesn't think to even question anything about it until it's far too late. We are well down that rabbit hole. I'm feeling kind of ranty because it's just awful. And honestly, that is the only thing I'm really getting out of this book is a really bad romance. And the external plot, like what we're working towards, just seems so lackluster. Like it has taken 60% of the book just to kind of give me an inciting moment on what the plot is. And we are very sluggishly working towards that. But I don't know. This is not good. I am very slowly and begrudgingly working my way to finish this one. It's kind of one that I've been picking up before bed and I'm at the point now where if I fall asleep and don't retain anything, I don't care. I'm not backtracking. I'm just picking up from where I left off the next day. My excuse is, is that I've read it before, so I've already paid my dues with this story. But as I've mentioned, I've read other things by this author and I like her. I like her current writing. I think she's quite good now. So... For the sake of Project Urban Fantasy, I would at the very least like to try the second book to see if things have improved in there. This one may very well be her debut, and maybe she gets better from there. But at the moment, like, great covers. I like the ideas. I like the writing style. But the story and the execution in this one is just one of the worst that I've read. And that is including... A bunch of really bad paranormal romances because those are at least are supposed to be bad. <laughs> I'm very surprised to be sitting here saying all of that to you and really bashing on this book but I'm just disappointed and I'm floored and it keeps getting worse. Like I just read a scene I, like I can't I wish I could give you specifics but I hate talking spoilers because there's always that one person like me who hears the thing and they're like I really didn't want to hear that. So on the off chance that you read this book, I'm not going to spoil specifics, but let's just leave it at like the more things that happen in this book, the more and more dissatisfied I'm getting with it. And to the point where I like said out loud, this is so stupid. So the plan is, is to just continue gradually working my way through it. Final update for this episode. I finished the book. I can't tell you that I retained anything beyond about the 60% mark. I was just so over it. I wasn't listening, I just let it play even after I fell asleep, and I didn't backtrack because nothing was giving me substance, I just, I didn't care. In fact, the only reason I didn't DNF it outright is because I didn't have anything else to listen to. I'm almost afraid to go on Goodreads and see if I wrote a review for this one initially. Hopefully whatever I pick next is much better than this one. Uh, now granted, I do have a couple of continuations to series already going, so those are pretty much guaranteed I'm going to at least mildly enjoy them letting that one go. But I have a masochistic tendency in me, so I am going to try the second one to see if maybe it got better. Maybe the character got all of her idiocy out of her system, and so she's going to be a lot more enjoyable to read about going forward. We shall see. That wraps it up for this episode. I, I really haven't had a good structure yet for these series of projects that I'm doing on my channel, but it occurred to me that like, one of the reasons I feel so stressed is because I'm trying to put them in whenever I feel like reading something in that genre. But it's just meaning that I'm walking around all the time feeling like I should be doing something that I'm not. 
so in counter to that, what I decided to do is focus on one of these projects per month and post one video per project quarterly. And I'll do it on a rotation. So in December, I did Project YA, January, Project Urban Fantasy, so February will be sci-fi. And then I'll start the rotation over again. That way I don't get sick of any particular genre. You don't get sick about watching about any particular genre, hopefully. And it'll add a lot of good variety to what I'm doing. So stay tuned for another episode of this in May. Thanks so much for joining me on this venture, and I hope to catch you next time. Bye.